The, uh, I've been looking uh, quite uh, a bit more deeply than I had before into this new president of Nigeria who uh, can't accept uh, the affront to democracy that the coup in Niger, according to him, represents. But he doesn't have the greatest democratic credentials himself. First of all, there's very serious and credible uh, allegations of electoral corruption in his own election and it's still actually before the courts the opposition have never accepted uh, his election uh, secondly uh, the senate of nigeria has refused his demand that nigerian troops be sent as part of an ECOWAS uh, invasion of their neighbor uh, niger and then there's his own checkered history. To my absolute astonishment, forgive my ignorance, I had no idea that this man was a bagman for the mafia and the drug dealers uh, in Chicago, Illinois, which doesn't seem like a great qualification to be uh, the leader of Nigeria. Uh, these people who are now talking about uh, democracy in Niger, many of them don't have a leg to stand on, do they? No, no, they do not. No, they do not. Look at uh, Ivory Coast, for example. You have Watara, you know, going against the constitution and running for another third term. What's that if not an institutional coup? But, you know, he's a friend of France. Look at Cameroon, Paul Bia, being in power for 43 years, but still, you know, a friend to the democratic loving West. Now, Tinobu himself, uh, the general perception on the ground is that He's the perfect tool, you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted someone compromised to push through whatever policies you'd like. Look at, uh, in a few weeks since coming into power, he has scrapped fuel subsidies. You now have, uh, Nigeria, which, you know, has been having fuel shortages despite being the biggest oil producing country in Africa. Now, then again, looking at his, uh, credentials back in Chicago, you know, uh, money laundering for his, uh, relatives in the heroin trade. If you are, you know, as the American intelligence community has historically done, if you're looking for someone you can dangle a knife over should they step out of line, Tinubu probably still has uh, material interest in the West. He still has, like very many other, you know, Western favorites in Africa, he still has assets in the West. This could very easily be seized if he's seen as stepping out of line. And when, once you look at it that way, you begin to understand why ECOWAS was initially taking the kind of measures it was against Nigeria. It was merely serving someone else's interest. Because consider what the Americans have in Nigeria, for example. The biggest drone base in Africa, built at $100 million and costs $30 million annually to run. The U.S. also says since 2012, they've spent $500 million in Niger. So for them, this is not a small investment. And again, just going forward into explaining why this coup is popular, Niger is the second poorest country in the world. Uh, and America's response to all this poverty is spending $500 million on militarizing the region. And, you know, if as a young man, you've grown seeing, you know, uranium being dug up from the ground and being sent away to power France, meanwhile, 80% of your countrymen don't have access to electricity, you're going to feel resentment. And at some point, you're going to question, you know, what role uh, does democracy play into, you know, how uh, basically the basic living conditions of people improve. And if democracy is not working, you have people now considering the military option, uh, such as military coups. Yeah. Uh, lastly, uh, widening the focus a little bit, uh, all these countries, including Chad, uh, complain uh, that the NATO destruction of Libya and its deployment, for they clearly deployed in my own country, openly deployed Islamist fanatics uh, to overthrow the government of Gaddafi in Libya and that the Islamization of Libya in the destruction of uh, the system that they had there before has now destabilized the whole of the Sahel. 
And as I pointed out earlier, somewhat to my surprise, as someone who didn't even know there were Muslims in Mozambique, there's a, an Islamist fanatic insurgency as far south as Mozambique. Isn't this the kind of Frankenstein monster phenomenon? We use these Islamist fanatics to destroy Gaddafi in Libya. And now they're on the march uh, throughout Africa. Exactly, exactly. And again, look at what happened in Afghanistan. The Taliban was initially armed to dislodge the Soviet from Afghanistan. And the end result was, you know, they came back and uh, occupied Afghanistan and reversed back, you know, gains such as uh, women's rights. And going back to Libya, uh, it's exactly the invasion of Libya that has led to the problems we see in, we see in the Sahel. Burkina Faso today does not control 40% of its territory. Imagine the economic opportunities missed as a result of not accessing 40% of your country, which is run by terrorists. You have these terrorists also uh, running mines in uh, in Mali as well. And if you can remember last year, uh, an official from Mali said, give me an audience with the Security Council. I have evidence that France is supporting terrorists in Mali. So, and again, you, you, you get to ask yourself, why doesn't the West also see the negative consequences of invasion, particularly Europe? Because for the Americans, you can say they have an entire ocean dividing them from migrants. But for Europe, if Niger falls, the resulting migrant situation is going to be worse than anything we have seen so far. And again, as we saw yesterday, a delegation from Mali and Burkina Faso were present in Yami, Niger. And they basically they had uh, this is the main message. We saw what happened in Libya. If it happens in Niger, who knows how long it will take to get things back to normal, 30, 40, 50 years. Basically, they say, you know, we've said no, whatever it takes, we'll make sure that does not happen here. And yeah, I think we should definitely like call out the West because this all benefits nobody but the West. For everyone else, it's it's a loss, especially for Africans who seem to be like finally, you know, finalizing the war of decolonization. This podcast was brought to you by BG Media App and BarGlobal.net. Please subscribe, like, and share this video. It does help support our productions. Also, please download the BG Media App to access the best works of the world's authors rendered in audiobooks, along with great experience through music, podcasts, and vodcasts.